Hi, my name is Sergey, and I'm a cloud solution architect for data and AI with Microsoft Customer Success Technology Strategy Team. I'm working closely with Redis Labs to enable Azure Cache for Redis on our Azure platform. Our speaker for this session is Chris from Redis Labs Field Engineering. Chris is going to present a very interesting session on your real-time fraud detection using Redis technology such as Redis Stream, Redis Search, Redis Bloom, and Redis Hash. Enjoy your session. Hello, my name is Chris McGee, and I'm one of the principal engineers here on the Redis Labs field engineering team. Today, we're going to discuss using Redis and Azure to detect fraud in real time in the retail scenario. Hello, and welcome to our presentation on detecting fraud with Azure and Redis Enterprise. And once a senior postal inspector who specialized in mail fraud told me that fraud is an invisible tax on society, and I think he meant businesses as well. Why has fraud become so important all of a sudden? There are several reasons driving this interest in fraud. First, the increased adoption of digital transformations across organizations means that there is more and more data and more and more transactions flowing through. And if the percentage of fraud is small, with that larger percentage of transactions is going to increase and become statistically significant. Second, COVID has driven a lot of changes in online retailing. Before, the majority of transactions happened through point of sale systems. This required that the fraudster be physically present to commit fraud. However, with the push to online, it's much, much easier for these fraudsters to spread the breadth of width across different transactions and has made them much more efficient. And finally, most of these systems were designed when systems were old and constrained by memory or disk. However, this has changed with the adoption of cloud and we're seeing a shift from these legacy systems that were built for low transaction rates to the cloud where it's much, much faster. A recent survey on COVID retailers found that 79% of retailers observed an increase in fraud. All this is driving to make fraud detection much, much more important. Our agenda for today's talk is the goals of fraud detection, some of the solutions we found, a bit on the architecture, information about scoring, some of the flows that we see, and we'll finish with a live demonstration. Our goals in fraud detection are to stop fraud as early as possible in the process. We don't want to have to go through and slow down the user experience. Second, we want to optimize for real-time flows. Users will notice when their response is slow, and that might cause them to abandon their cart and end up decreasing the amount of revenue through the site. We want to limit the false positives that slow commerce. We want to make troubleshooting as simple as possible. Many AI systems are very difficult to troubleshoot and require specialized knowledge and are hard to do in real time. So therefore, we want to avoid running the AI if possible. Finally, we want to ensure a minimum of five nines uptime across all of our systems. This led us to several solutions. First, we want to use asynchronous messaging to score. When the user submits an item to cart, it is scored asynchronously in the background. And for this, we require a message bus and message passing systems. Second, we want to develop a layered approach to scoring. We'll talk about all the layers that we use, but the idea here is that we don't rely on a single layer to determine the score. And if a layer fails, we can still manage to make good decisions. We want to use microservices to ensure flexibility, ease of deployment, and ease of change. And finally, we want to use geo-replication over two regions. This led us to the following architecture. First, we're running application gateway at the top, and we're dividing it amongst our microservices, our cart, catalog, logs, and login subsystems. These all publish messages to Redis streams. We're also running Redis search to run the cart and the catalog, Redis bloom for our profiles, which we'll talk about, and we're running AI as well as standard Redis data structures in the background. Our global architecture uses DNS to point to the currently active data system and we're using geo-replication for our streams or our message bus so that if one if we lose one region, we simply repoint the DNS to the other one and all of the data is available so the user can continue. Our data design revolves around several components. First, we're using Redis streams. This is a geo-replicated message bus available on Azure in the marketplace. We're using Redis search for catalog and shopping cart. Redis search allows us to do full text search as well as secondary indices on Redis data structures. 
we're using Redis Bloom for purchase profiles. A Bloom filter allows us to quickly determine in a probabilistic manner whether or not a transaction has occurred before and is extremely efficient. We're using Redis hashes for user identity and profiles, and these are standard data structures included within Redis and can also be geo-replicated. Finally, we're using Redis AI to score the cart. This could easily be swapped out for Azure machine learning. However, I'm most familiar with Redis AI, so I chose this for the demo. The score and layers, we are relying on four different components. First, the digital identity or user characteristics. In our demo, we show that we're using the IP address of the user, as well as the fingerprinting of the browser as part of our digital identity. This is separate from the authentication and is just another data point that allows us to make good decisions. We have a purchase profile, and this is stored in Redis Bloom. We are bucketing based on the category and price of each item. So for example, have we ever seen this user specifically purchase automotive gear before? And have we seen this user purchase automotive gear between $10 and $20 before? This allows us to get a good idea of what the user has done before in a distributed manner. We also have the user profile, and this is a per user purchase history. This will tell us whether or not the user has purchased from this category before. We use this as a tensor to feed into our AI, and our AI compares cart selections to broad patterns across many users. So for example, we will have a user tensor that we will input and check against all of the users to see if this basket is something that is fraudulent or not. The first flow that we have is the simplest. It is the guest flow. The guest goes ahead and adds an item to their cart from the catalog, and we hit the check identity service. And it notices that the user is guest. So here we just short circuit everything and submit directly to the shopping cart. And the reason for this is there's no user profile for guest and there's no purchase history for guest. So it wouldn't make any sense to waste any cycles going ahead to compute all of this. And we just go directly to cart. And then we, and you'll see in the demo that we force the, the guest user to either log in or create an account so that we can go ahead and get a better idea of what's going on. The second flow is the user who has a profile with the system. Here, the user takes an item from the catalog, submits it to the cart. They hit the check identity service. The check identity service goes ahead and looks at their IP address and browser fingerprint to see if they've had these before. Then it submits to the next stage, the purchase profile. We see if the user has purchased this item before in the Bloom filter or this item and bucket from the Bloom filter before. If this brings us to a score of higher than 1.5, which you'll see in the demo, we go ahead and bypass the AI to the shopping cart. We have a reasonably high degree of confidence that we've seen this user before with this digital identity and they match the purchase profile in the past. Therefore, we don't need to run the AI. We're sure that this is not a fraudulent transaction and we can go ahead and proceed. Finally, the most difficult flow is the whole complete flow. A user goes to the catalog, they add an item to the cart. We check the identity again, checking their IP address and fingerprint browser if we've seen those before. Then we go ahead and submit those to the purchase profile. Again, we take a look to see if this has happened or not. And in this case, this is a new purchase that has not happened before. So we go ahead and we submit to the AI for scoring. The AI scores against the user profile. How this works is we grab the current profile, we add the new item, and we create a tensor. This tensor is compared against all of the bucket basket data that we've grabbed before for these users. And then we go ahead and score these in the AI, and we submit the scored item to the cart. Here are some links for more references. We have our top level use case fraud detection, as well as a great blog entry by our field CTO, Alan, on the new stack about how we use microservice design patterns. There are information on Redis AI, Redis Bloom for probabilistic, and Redis Search for that secondary index that we're using in our cart and our catalog. Please feel free to check these out anytime you want. Now let's get to the demo. As you can see, we're at the top page of our catalog and our shopping application for our retail demo. Up on the top right, we have our current fraud score, zero, because there are no items in the cart. And the guest, the fraud score goes from zero to 100%, and we're looking to stay as low as possible, therefore we're green here. So let's go ahead and start adding some items to the cart. We'll add some automotive items, and we'll purchase three of these. You'll notice that our cart has ticked up here, and our fraud score has moved. Let's add some more items to the cart. OK, 
Okay, now we have a lot more items in the cart. Let's go take a look. And you can see that we have bargain books, luxury camera, wireless bargain, and automotive bargain. The product name is a, is a combination of the category, books, camera, wireless, and what we call the bucket, the bargain, luxury. And these are based on the price of the, the, op, the items. Luxury goes from, say, $500 to $1,000. And this way we can bucket what we've seen purchasedly previous by the user. If we go to our logs, we see that we're logging every single action onto a message bus as well. And we can see the guests got added to the cart. And it's the guest user, so we go directly to the cart. In the case of the guest, we don't bother scoring uh, the profile or any of the user information because that user isn't there. And you'll notice that when we go to the cart for the guest, we have a fraud score of 100 because we have no way of determining what's going on. None of our scores are any good. So it won't allow you to check out and you have to go create an account. Let's go ahead and clear our logs. And let's log in as a different user. We're going to switch users. Let's go ahead and log in as the Lux Mobile app. If we log in as this user, we can go to our cart now. And we'll see that our fraud score is still 100. And we can look in and see that there is nothing here as well. So let's go back, re-log in, and set some of our user information. Going to the Lux Mobile, and let's remember our IP in our browser. If we log in, we go back to our cart, we see our score has dropped to 50. Right? We go in and we can see the information. We see the identity score is set to one. So because it knows our IP and our browser fingerprint, we're much closer to actually being able to check out. But because the fraud score isn't under the threshold, we still have another step to make. Here, we've included a capture where you have to find the oatmeal raisin cookie in all of the cookies. However, this could be another more useful step, such as forcing the user to re-log in or having the user actually confirm their email address. You can see here that we're scoring all the way through every time we switch the user, we're going ahead and running the AI scores again. Let's reset the logs. And log in as a user that's more likely to have this kind of cart. So now if we go back to our cart, we can see that our fraud score has dropped into the green range of 26. What happened? Well, we click on the information and we can see that our identity score is, is half because only we've only added our browser to this. And the profile score is one, meaning that we've purchased books in the bargain price range more than once in the past. And because this is over the threshold of 1.5, we don't bother to score the AI. However, in the case of the camera luxury, we don't buy luxury items usually as this user, and we certainly don't purchase camera equipment. And you'll see that the AI scores this as one because this is something that is likely to mesh with this kind of basket. We can actually go ahead and view the user profile and see, for example, here that this user has purchased all of these separate items before, but they have not purchased the camera. And that's why it went through to the AI. So again, we're avoiding the AI wherever possible, just to make this quicker and more easy to troubleshoot. And in the cases where we, we can't match up with the profile score or the identity score, we do go ahead and run the AI anyhow. Okay, now that we're below the threshold for acceptable behavior, we can go ahead and check out. You'll notice that the checkout button is now green. So let's go ahead and check out of this. It looks like we failed. What we've actually done is taken down this instance in the US West region. And now we're going to go ahead and shift over to the US region, showing you the features of our active geo replication. We currently have our DNS record pointing to the US West 2, where we've taken down the instance, and we can see the IP address here. We're actually going to fail over to the east. Now, normally you could do this with Azure Traffic Manager, but we're just using DNS for the simple purposes of showing how this works in a demo environment. So let's go ahead and update our DNS record. We're going to add the new instance of the application gateway and remove the old. Now let's save. Because our TTL is fairly quick, this should update before we have a chance to get back to the other window. And we see the new IP address ready to go. It's good. Now we're serving out of the east. 
So we've demonstrated several great features that should help making your fraud detection better. We've shown you the AI, we've shown you using layers to score, as well as using our active geo-replication so that you can fail over to another region in the case of any, any outages. Thanks for watching our presentation today. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at christian at redislabs.com. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for watching this session. Please provide us with your feedback. Have a great day and enjoy other sessions.